All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Bob Mahalik. I'm the superintendent of schools. I'm joined here today by a group of administrators that will uh, be taking your questions and hopefully assisting you as you uh, continue on in your search for finding what you believe is the best thing for yourself and your children as we move into the 2020-21 school year. Uh, we have Mr. Damian Blanchard. Damian is our director of technology. So he plays a really, really big part now, uh, more so than ever, uh, since you know a great portion of what we're gonna be doing will involve technology. We have Mr. John Gorham. John Gorham is our secondary uh, principal. Um, and he is also our principal of the Crestwood Cyber Academy. We have Mrs. Beth Ann Harris. Uh, uh, she is our supervisor of special programs and behavioral health. Uh, lots and lots of information. If you should have any special concerns regarding your child uh, or any uh, sort of special accommodations that they might need in an uh, um, Yes, sir. They can, they, there's some, they're saying they can't hear you real well. So I don't, are you far from the mic? Nope, I'm right by, can you hear me? I, I can hear you okay, yeah, so I don't, and so could Christy. So it might be that person's okay. mic, uh, speaker. Yep, I'm. Uh, no, nah, we're getting other people say they can hear you fine. So, okay, okay. just checking. Thank you, no, thank you, John. Uh, with that, we also have uh, Mrs. Christy Labak. Uh, which is the way I say it. Uh, Christy is a uh, business teacher in the high school. Uh, she's been uh, instrumental in assisting us with all things Crestwood Cyber Academy. I do see Mrs. Tracy Cormier. Tracy Cormier is our office assistant for the uh, for our behavioral specialist and special programs director. Uh, and Tracy also has been a very big part of our uh, programming. I see Mrs. Walk on here. Hello, Liz. Uh, just see if I have anyone else. I'm sorry if I missed other members of our uh, administration. Um, I want to thank you. We have uh, 44 uh, participants. What we had decided to do because there are, oh, and I'm sorry, <laughs> Mrs. Annie Moran. I apologize, Annie. Annie is our uh, consultant from the Luzerne Intermediate Unit. Uh, again, yeah, she's been a part of this from day one. So how I forgot Mrs. Annie Moran. Uh, thank you, Annie, for being here. And Mrs. Stephanie Ortero, uh, who is my assistant, is here as well. Uh, I just saw her. Um, so we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna allow you to ask questions. You're gonna ask them in the chat box. We'll, we'll remain, everybody will remain muted with the exception of the administrators. Uh, you could ask your questions. Uh, Damien, Mr. Blanchard is going to ask us the questions. Uh, any one of us will answer, and sometimes several of us will answer. The purpose, again, for this is uh, we've been trying to communicate as much as, as we can. We realize that there's still a portion of our family that aren't able to attend board meetings, weren't able to get on uh, a few of the other town hall meetings that we had. So what we wanted to do was uh, you know for the next few days, which started yesterday, we'll go till tomorrow, then all next week, Monday through Thursday, have these meetings. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Um, and this will be recorded and Damien will post it on Facebook. So if you ask a question, don't recall the answer or maybe you feel you missed something or if you have a friend that can't get on because uh, we know that 10 a.m. is not the best time for everyone. Uh, and we are going to continue to meet with families as well and take uh, emails. Um, but this is our way, again, of trying to communicate with you uh, as quickly and timely as possible. So we're going to begin with uh, Mr. Uh, Blanchard asking the questions. And again, thank you so very much for being with us. Thanks, Mr. Mahalik. Okay, our first question, I think John may have answered this, but I'll read it anyway. It's from Sherry Kolosensky, if I pronounced that right. My question is, my son is supposed to have an engineering class this year. He will be in ninth grade. If after first quarter, everything gets better, uh, he can return to Questwood, question mark. Yep, that would be for Mr. Gorham. 
Yeah, I answered that one in the chat. Um, I said uh, currently we're um, working on our uh, brick and mortar schedules in the high school and uh, seeing which teachers are available. Um, administratively, we're working to try to staff um, the Admentum um, platform with as many Crestwood teachers as possible. Um, if there's a course that's not available through Admentum, um, we're gonna we're gonna do what we can to offer that to the Crestwood teaching staff, um, and hopefully be able to offer um, all of the courses that the students requested. Um, the question about returning, um, I'm sure a lot of uh, parents. Uh, this is a pretty common question: Can they return if things improve, um, and how does that process work? Um, when the students are enrolled in a private cyber charter, one that's not associated with Crestwood, you have to de-enroll from the school um, and you actually leave the district. When you choose the Crestwood Cyber Academy, you remain a, a student of the Crestwood School District. So the process of moving back and forth <clears throat> is, is considerably easier uh, due to you remain a Crestwood student. So it would basically just be an email, a phone call, um, getting in touch with one of us and saying that we're either whatever the reason might be it might be that things aren't going well in in cyber or you feel more comfortable coming back to school um, any one of those reasons you can transition back or vice versa if you're in school and things aren't going well you don't feel comfortable um, you could also switch to the cyber platform as well yeah no, let's go up with that uh, where the only time there will be what we are going to call a lockout or a lockdown is if we should be um, if we should be closed due to a COVID situation. So if the governor comes in and and shuts us down, if the county comes in shuts us down, uh, then at that point all students in cyber will remain in cyber, and all students in brick and mortar will immediately transition to distance learning. So there will, no be, there will be no jumping at that point because uh, one, you wouldn't want to, you'd want the consistency. Uh, the Cyber Academy will continue. Uh, there will be absolutely not any disruption on a closure and we will be prepared to immediately begin distance learning as a district for our students that are in the brick and mortar. We've been working tremendously to make that happen. Will it be as seamless as cyber? No, because cyber, you're just gonna wake up and you know, continue your, your normal uh, routine with your, with your classes, um, where the brick and mortar will now be told they're staying home and they're converting over. So that will be the only time there will be a lockdown. Uh, and, and really, it, it would only be common sense at that point. You'd want to stay where you're at because everything's going to continue for you just as it was prior to the closure. Thank you both. Um, the next question comes from Sophia. Now that you've announced the teachers for cyber schooling, can you please tell us what teachers are assigned to specific grades? Uh, we will do that shortly. Um, so I, some classes will have a teacher uh, dedicate right to them. Kindergarten, first and sixth grade will have a full-time teacher. Uh, uh, two, three, four, five will be departmentalized. Uh, so we, we will do that. Uh, we are training with our teachers as we speak. Began this morning, they will train uh, for the next few days, and they've already been trained and will continue to be trained uh, beyond this week. Uh, but yeah, that, that will become known, uh, you know, again, after we uh, really see our numbers. Thank you. Um, the next question, Lisa Ann, if starting with cyber and taking a cyber elective that's not offered in school, then switch to in school, how does it work to switch to an elective that's available in school, such as Woodshop? Yeah, it's a great question. I think that's John or Christy could probably be the best to answer that. And that's a great question. What was the question? Uh, if taking the cyber elective? Yeah, that's yes. offered in our district. And Christy and I just actually were speaking about this yesterday. Yeah, uh, I, would, I would say if it's a if cyber elective offered in our district, um, as long as there's a spot, they could go into it. For example, I teach accounting. So if someone signed up for cyber accounting and then decided to come back to brick and mortar, as long as there's a seat in that section, which I'm sure there will be, they would be able to just transfer right back in. Um, 
while I have my mic on, I also saw a question about ninth grade electives. There are only certain electives in the high school open to ninth graders. Um, so you probably would want to talk to your counselor or one of the administrators before you decided on what ninth grade elective to select for your daughter if she goes to cyber. I think that was Helen's question, maybe. Yeah, the question, so if, take, if you take a cyber elective and it's not something that we normally offer um, in the brick and mortar setting, um, the counselors would treat that as if the student was um, a student that had transferred from another district or from another cyber school um, with a transcript. They would take that course and they would do their best to match that up to a credit count as a credit for a course that they would have had to take here to fulfill their graduation requirements. So they, they would get credit for that course, um, but you wanna be careful um, just randomly picking, like uh, Christy said, you wanna be careful picking courses in cyber that maybe wouldn't match up to anything here and wouldn't give you a credit towards your graduation requirements. But when we get students that come in from other districts and they in their transcripts, uh, typically they do line up pretty well because they're Pennsylvania schools. But if they're not, um, they'll they'll do their best to give you a credit for a course that you took. But like I said, if it's something that's kind of a non-traditional course, you you want to send an email or reach out to one of the counselors here first. And, and let me also just say, uh, and I know that of the. 44 people that are joining us today, the 40-some yes, uh, the, the hundreds of families that we spoke with, you, you're not the traditional cyber parent. Your children are probably not the traditional cyber student. Okay, we understand that. And that's why we really tried to be, um, you know, so um, understanding of how many questions you're going to have. And the you know, really the uncertainty, you know, with you. And, and not that the traditional cyber person or student is not a priority to us because they are. We've started this entire platform in October before any of us had heard of COVID-19. Uh, we were on a mission to improve our cyber offerings in a, on a mission to improve uh, our, the rigor of our cyber program and bring more to the Crestwood Cyber Academy, which was at the time under a different name, you know, bring to it that, that Crestwood tradition of excellence. Um, however, in this case, again, of, of most of the people on here, I bet you 95% of you are only coming here until we, you know, see this thing through. We understand that, we respect that. Many of us here are parents as well and are in the same position as you. So I'm going to, um, I, I'm going to caution you that if you believe that you may even come back at some point this year or maybe even earlier, like, well, you know what, I, I think in October we, we feel comfortable. I wouldn't look at the course offerings of Edmentum and just, wow, I, you know, because we will not be able to offer all those when we come back to brick and mortar. Doesn't mean we don't have a great robust offering, but there are things on there that we won't be able to offer. So I wouldn't, if, if you believe you're coming back, I would look at what we offer stay with them or if you think you're going to see th this through the whole year um because listen, the, the data would support that this probably isn't going to change enough for those that are not comfortable now it's not going to change enough for us to be comfortable in march okay the, the, we do believe i believe talking to the medical specialist that you know that, that i'm able to um communicate with that you know by the end of next spring going into the summer, we're going to feel a lot better. And everybody, I think, is going to be much more comfortable. But I don't believe by anything that we're hearing or seeing or any of the data that's released that that's going to happen. Uh, so the only thing that may change is your own personal feelings and beliefs, uh, because I don't think you're going to see anything in the medical data to give us uh, any more certainty that uh, the, the risk isn't there as it is now. So I would be very careful to the classes you're picking if you're going out there. And there are some neat things on Edmentum. Uh, you know, Mrs. LeBach and I speak about that. Like, oh, you know, sports management. You know, we, we don't have that. But 
you know, Christie oversees our FBLA, our very, very uh, popular FBLA uh, program. And that's, that's one of the competitive areas in sports management or something to that effect. So, um, you know, I would just be, be very cautious as to what you're, you're choosing if you don't believe you're in there for the entire year. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Eric Reinheimer. This is from Mr. Gorham. My son is in the seventh grade and was placed into pre-algebra. I know not all kids were placed into pre-algebra. In cyber, would he still be taking uh, pre-algebra or does cyber instead only have a more general math that all cyber kids will take? Yeah, that, may, that might be a question that Annie could jump in on too as well as far as what, what levels of algebra are offered. Um, so the great thing is that all the Crestwood teachers are working and I'm seeing this over and over again, like, will they have this class? Will they have this class? The Crestwood teachers are currently working on lining up what they do in their class in a normal situation when we're not in the middle of a pandemic so that those classes can be offered online. So if your child was placed in a pre-algebra course or biology one or um, any class that they were put in and planned on taking this year in school, they will still be taking if they choose the cyber option. That's what we've been working on all summer is lining those things up, making sure that the teachers are able to still offer them online. Like Mr. Mahalik was saying in regards to the Edmentum courses, yes, they have a lot of additional courses that maybe Crestwood doesn't offer but we are focusing on the Crestwood courses and those will be the ones that we hope to have the Crestwood teachers be teaching um, in the fall. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is from Kevin Scott. This has multiple layers to it, so I'm gonna ask them one at a time. Um, is Honors English available through the Cyber Academy for ninth grade? Once again, if it's, if it's a course that was offered at Crestwood, it will still be offered via cyber. Okay, and what will phys ed look like? Phys ed, the teachers um, will be coming up with videos where the kids will be watching them. Um, another question I've seen a lot is like, what does a typical day look like? All courses will be two to three times per week live with your teachers. Um, gym obviously would not be two to three times per week. It would be as many as you would have it in class. So the teachers will still be there. You'll still have activities you would have to record you're doing at home. Um, you know, so many junk, jumping jacks, so many sit-ups. Um, maybe you're running, practicing running the mile or whatever the unit is in gym, the teachers are working on making that virtual as well. Um, beyond just like, here's a jump rope, get some exercise. Uh, it'll all be guided instruction in terms of, of gym and all of the special areas. I know there was a question about supplies, like how are we gonna get supplies for all of these? The art teacher, anybody will ensure that you have what you need you will pick those up ahead of time. Um, I probably at the beginning, as we're trying to get this all working, it might be more frequent, but the goal would be maybe once a month, you'd have to stop by the school and pick up whatever your kiddo would need for their special areas or even their classroom teachers. Okay, um, what is, oh, can the kids be enrolled in both online and in school for classes? No. Okay. What is lunch going to be like? Can the kids sit with their friends or will it be assigned seats? Assigned seats. The, the entire day will be assigned because that's very important for contact tracing. Uh, so, so everything's going to be assigned buses, classrooms, uh, and in the lunchroom. Now, if we go outside or, you know, we're using larger spaces, uh, again, we're going to be six feet apart from each other, uh, minimal, uh, because at that point there won't be any face coverings at all. Um, so, so, uh, but yeah, they're, they're you, you know, again, we we want them to have fun. Obviously, we want them to be kids and and still like school. But things are going to be different, and and it's not us. And maybe the kids will think it's us, 
because they're going to hear over and over and over about keeping their masks on, keeping their social distance, hands to themselves, sitting in their assigned seat. But we have to do this now uh, because we want to mitigate the risk to our students as much as possible um, and to our staff and to you at home and your loved ones at home. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a different, it's going to be a different in-person school system. Um, and, and we're hoping that our kids can adjust to that. And, and we're going to try everything we've got to, to still make it, you know, a great experience in terms of the other stuff. The academics will be there. They'll, they'll be as great as they've always been. But, you know, school is, is more than just academics. There's all these other pieces. And, uh, and quite honestly, you know, we don't know how that's going to feel or look uh, or how the kids are going to accept that. But, um, but there are things that they're going to hear us say over and over and over. And we're going to ask you for those that are sending their kids to the brick and mortar to please reinforce this uh, because it's going to take all of us saying the same thing for our students to understand just how serious this can be. Is there a deadline to enroll? So we are going to uh, today announce that the deadline is uh, August 11th. Okay, now when I say that to you, it doesn't mean that on August 12th, you still couldn't enroll. You, you still can't enroll. What we're saying is we now need to start, somebody asked about the teachers and how many kids are in sixth grade and the numbers and caseloads. So we really now are at the point while we feel we are very, very prepared, it's now the logistics of this. So the first cutoff is August 11th. And what that will do is allow us to place our kids, uh, really focus, especially on the secondary level, on the schedules, looking at uh, you know, our teachers' schedules on the secondary level. Uh, do we have teachers in-house that can teach on the secondary level? I know there's some questions. We may. And if we do not, then we're going to rely on the Edmentum teachers who are all Pennsylvania certified, who will be using the state standards. Um, but again, that's why our first uh, dead, deadline is the 11th. So we can see where we can place those kids. Um, again, we will not turn anyone away. The second, the third round may be different. It may be an Edmentum teacher uh, as opposed to a Crestwood teacher. Okay, is there, um, if they go to school one week and want to change to cyber the next week, is there a limit to the amount of kids that can be enrolled in the cyber academy? So there's, there's no limit that can be enrolled. Obviously it shifts our staffing. Uh, so yes, you, you can, if you decide this is not for me or this little thing right now under the conditions that we have to live under is not for my child. You can make a switch. You know, obviously you can't switch back and forth um, because it's not, that's not good for your, 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 your child. Um, so you can make a decision to leave or come to cyber uh, if you just you know, do not feel good for you or not working in either place. But that will be something that if it's done more than once, then we're gonna have to have a conversation. Um, and, and discuss what, you know, with the individual situation that you may be dealing with. And what will be done if the kids aren't following the mask or face shield rule? That's going to be, you know, obviously an internal administrative uh, matter, you know, that, uh, that we will handle. But we are going to take that very, very serious as we need to. Okay, thank you. Next question comes from Bill. Who will be teaching fourth grade lessons? So they're going to, right now they're, that's going to be departmentalized. So there will be a combination of teachers. They are all Crestwood uh, elementary teachers, uh, names that you, well, we announced the names yesterday, uh, but we do not exactly know right now who is teaching, you know, uh, the core subject uh, in fourth grade. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Lisa Ann. Does cyber have set hours? We recommend... 25 minutes per course for elementary and 45 minutes per course for secondary and that's for each day. There's not specific times where they 
have to log on where, you know, everybody has to be on from nine to four or nine to three, but your teachers will be conducting live lessons two to three times per week per content area. You will get those schedules ahead of time. They will not change. They'll be the same. You'll also be aware of when their office hours are. So if your child needs help, then they can pop on and get help as well. Thank you. And if I could just uh, add sorry. to that. So what you witnessed in the spring uh, will be nothing like this. Okay, that was enrichment. That was, re uh, that will not be the case. So you, again, your teachers will have their class rules. Uh, they, they will expect attendance. They will be grading. Uh, they will be testing. There will be um, all those things that you would do in a classroom, but attendance will be taken uh, daily. So again, there, there certainly is going to be flexibility and that will be something for your teacher to speak to you about. But attendance daily is going to be required as it is when you come to school. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Kevin Scott. Can you use a laptop instead of Chromebook with the Cyber Academy? Um, I guess I can answer that. You that's could. a Damien answer. Well, I'm going to actually loop it because there's a bunch of questions about the Chromebook th through the chat. So Damien can kind of put them all together. But yes, you can use a laptop instead of a Chromebook. We will be distributing them um, very soon. If you are going on vacation and unable to pick it up when we're um, when we call and let you know, that's okay. You can still pick it up closer to time, um, and we will provide an orientation for everybody in the Cyber Academy the week that school begins. Okay. The next question is from. Laura Panzik, I have two questions. The first one is if some, if for some reason the in-person learning is delayed start, would cyber school start on time? And the other question is with the online distant learn, learning, if the school closes, will there be some structure and new material um, introduced rather than in the spring? Yeah, so uh, very good question. Uh, first of all, we don't anticipate uh, a delay to the start of the school year. Um, but of course, again, that, that could change. Uh, there will not be a delay to cyber. Um, so, uh, so we do not expect a delay. However, again, if that would happen, cyber will begin. Uh, yes, when we, if we are shut down, okay, and, and listen, the, the probability of being shut down for a, a period of time is very good. Very good. I, I think Every superintendent, every school administrator knows that. I think they've, uh, the, the, the Department of Health has told us that we should, you know, uh, prepare for that. So we want our families to, to prepare for that um, to the best of your, your ability. If we close, the kids that are in the brick and mortar will switch to our distance learning platform. Um, all three buildings, uh, which is Rice, Fairview, and of course the secondary campus will have a schedule. We'll have a, um, you know, we'll have what we're calling a COVID-19 closure schedule. And it will be very similar to what you are doing in your brick and mortar class. They will share that with you in time, um, but it will not be like the spring. So, uh, it, we just, again, want to, and, and that's why I'm going to uh, appreciate us having our kids back on September 2nd and hopefully having them back without delay or without disruption. But what we will be doing is, you know, preparing them if we should be closed so they are aware of, of it because it will not be like the spring. What we did in the spring was what, we were able to do given the circumstances. It's what everybody did across the state. And anybody that says differently, they're just not being forthcoming with their families. We were forthcoming. This is what we could do, uh, and this is what we're going to do. Um, but it will be much, much different. It will be daily attendance. It will be, you know, obviously, again, grades. It will be tests. It will be assessments. Um, so everything that you expect in the brick and mortar, you will expect through our distance learning platform. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Holland. Oh, go uh, ahead, John. 
Let me let me just jump in there real quick um, and piggyback off of what what Mr. Mahal said. Um, the term shut down when people are saying if we shut down, um, if we close those those type of things um, in the spring when the when the governor made the order to shut down schools, that was that the schools, the brick and mortar settings were, were shut down and we weren't expected to teach the kids for that short amount of time right in the beginning. Um, moving forward, the expectation from the Department of Ed and the governor is that the term shutdown would be that the, basically the brick and mortar closes. But the expectation is that we've had enough time as school districts to prepare ourselves to be to be ready to teach virtually so it, technically there will be no shutdown um, we're expected to pick up our education immediately upon the the brick and mortar closing so the term shutdown is a little a little confusing um, because the the governor or the department of ed is not going to shut schools down and basically say we don't have to make up those days or we don't have to provide an education so um, you know, what he, what Mr. Mahalik had said was, yes, the cyber will continue as well as the brick and mortar setting, but in a virtual, with a virtual platform. Thank you, Mr. Gorham. Uh, the next question comes from Sophia. Besides Chromebooks, what supplies will we, will, what supplies are going to be provided with specifically for cyber schooling? Will there be workbooks for elementary students in addition to screen time? I could take that or Annie, but um, basically um, what we're saying is that any consumable um, materials and, you know, consumable materials are workbooks, um, spelling books, uh, any, any type of handwriting books, any type of math books, any type of manipulatives that they might use at the elementary level. Those, those are the areas where, um, you would have consumable materials. Uh, Mr. Sayre is going to be um, looking at the numbers and providing all of those consumable materials to the, to the cyber students as well. So the teachers that are teaching those courses um, will have the ability to reference those materials and reference those workbooks and use those manipulatives through the, through the cyber platform as well. Um, anything that we need on the secondary campus, if it's for a lab or some small things here, we will be providing those um, to the students. But they basically the entire platform, um, and Annie could, could attest to this, it's, it's a web-based platform. So technically you don't need any materials to be able to complete the cyber um, curriculum. But if there is anything that we, you know, need above and beyond what's needed web-based, we will provide that. Okay, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I think Helen Davis's question was answered, so I'll skip down a little bit here. Uh, Eric Reinheimer asked, for the middle school, are all cyber teachers going to be Crestwood teachers? And how much instruction will be live sessions? So... Uh, yeah, and Annie and I can both. So again, on the secondary campus, we, we do not yet have all the scheduling complete. There may, they may be uh, Crestwood cyber teachers, uh, Crestwood teachers doing the, the teaching in the secondary, but that's yet to be determined. Uh, again, that's why we had that cutoff on August 11th, so we can really look at the schedules of our, uh, of our faculty. Okay, thank you. And um, I'm just gonna, I believe you answered this. Jason Jennings asked, will AP level classes be available through Cyber Platform? Yes. Okay. Um, Lisa Ann then asks, how much video instructions are opposed to self-reading during Cyber Day for 10th grade? So two to three times per week per content area. And then um, the lessons have both videos and reading for them. Uh, there is a uh, read aloud option for them if they wanna have the slide read to them. But I would anticipate a couple of Zooms per day with different teachers and then the rest would be working on their own unless they needed help and then they could sign up for, or uh, not sign up for, but come for an office hour for one of the teachers that they needed help from. 
Okay, thank you. Mary Ellen uh, asks, will there be a demonstration of the Cyber Admentum program from the elementary viewpoint? The, uh, the one that I was provided was only for the 10th grade perspective. The 10th grade and elementary are, are similar in that it's the same platform, it's just the different content. So for the younger kids, they'll be using still the Wonders and the Go Map that they utilize. They'll just be using the uh, digital materials that they had offered to them in the fall. Okay, thank you. The next question I believe was answered. Uh, Ginny B, what is the difference between cyber through uh, CHS versus distant learning? It's really just the teachers. We'll be assigning the cyber kids will have their cyber teachers. As you know, the list has come out. They've been identified who those cyber teachers will be. Those will be the teachers teaching the kids who are doing cyber. The kids who are in the brick and mortar, they'll have, if, if we have to go to a shutdown, the brick and mortar teachers will then go online and their content will already be online for the kids to utilize. Thank you. Uh, Lisa Ann asks, will kids change classrooms each period in school? So in the elementary level, we're going to, uh, again, minimize the amount of movement uh, as much as possible. On the secondary campus, that's not nearly uh, as uh, easy to, to um, you know, to put in place because you have all different students with all different schedules. Uh, so you, you know, the secondary, you know, we're going to have them moving again with masks on uh, walking on the right hand side of the hallway, uh, continuing right into their classroom. It's going to be much, much different, uh, but we're going to obviously try to control uh, the movements as much as possible. And that will be much easier to do. And there will be less movement on the elementary than on the secondary level. Thank you, Mr. Mahawk. Uh, Helen Davis asks, are the electives listed for high school students available at all grade levels or do they vary? My daughter is in ninth grade, if that matters. The electives that are listed are for the um, different grade levels, high school. So if it's a high school level course in Crestwood, then it would be a high school level course in Edmentum. Uh, we don't want the seventh graders taking, you know, bio two. So all the electives would be grade level appropriate. Uh, Jocelyn says, I am also interested in the elementary demonstration. How does the Cyber Academy work with an IEP? Are, the, are there special education teachers or Title I support available? I can take that question. For students with IEPs, all of our children um, that have IEPs or related services, such as occupational therapy or speech therapy, um, will be signed as special education case manager. So they all have a special education teacher that will be working with them, monitoring their IEP goals, making sure that their um, appropriate accommodations are in place. Um, also, the Edmentum platform offers a lot of accommodations um, in itself. So all the text on the screen can be read to you. There's on-demand support. So if you need assistance and you're working on something outside of classroom hours, um, you have access to a Pennsylvania certified teacher at all times by, at the click of a button. There are guided notes. Um, the lessons are recorded so they can be accessed at a later time. If you're a child, I know that there are some other questions about occupational therapy and speech services. Um, those will be delivered um, in line with the, your child's current IEP and they'll be delivered virtually. Um, our staff is, you know, prepared to um, offer those kind of therapies um, virtually as well. So anything that is currently in your student's IEP that um, will be met in a cyber setting um, and will be meeting in the first couple of weeks of school as an IEP team to look at where your child's functioning, where their baselines are, and make any kind of revisions to the IEP as needed um, to fit our cyber platform. Um, and as always, I'm available at any time. So if anyone has any additional questions about IEPs or you know, accommodations in the cyber uh, platform, you can reach out to me at any time. And I can even put my, uh, my email in the chat for everyone um, if that'll be helpful. 
Thanks, Beth Ann. Uh, Ginny B asks, how many different teachers will be teaching cyber for 10th grade? Will it be a different teacher for each subject? That would be Mr. Gorham. Yeah, so um, on the secondary campus, the, um, the teachers for each subject are departmentalized um, based on the, the subject. So it would definitely be different teachers um, for each subject. Um, so to say how many different teachers um, will be teaching, so that's a hard question, um, but they would definitely be having a, a Pennsylvania, like Mr. Mohawk said, Pennsylvania certified teacher within that subject area. Thank you, Mr. Gorham. Um, mm -hmm. I believe Nicole's question was answered regarding teachers in the middle school. I think we're still working that. Uh, Maggie, asks, do we have a maximum enrollment per class section in mind? How many are currently enrolled in sixth grade? At what number would you open a second section? Yeah, go ahead, Annie. You wanted to take that? You start. Well, te teaching cyber is very different from teaching in the classroom. So to allow cyber teachers to have a normal classroom size, is very appropriate. If anything, they could have a little bit more than that. So as of right now, our class, our class sizes are not even at normal classroom sizes for cyber. So I don't think we will run into that, but we are looking at numbers constantly and enrollments and ensuring that the teachers and students can all learn effectively. We do not have a set cutoff point, but um, we are taking all of that into account. Uh, currently, I will share that we have 31 sixth grade students enrolled. Uh, so that's you know, probably just a little bit higher than your brick and mortar. Uh, and then, as Annie said, you know, certainly cyber lends itself to being able to have, uh, you know, more than your, your typical brick and mortar. So right now there's 31 sixth grade students. Thank you both. Uh, Yvette asks, will there be a listing or link we can access of cyber teachers per grade? I see in chat they were announced, but I believe I missed that. I'm sorry, Damien, mention that, read that again. I, I, I believe, I believe um, they're asking in regards to the cyber teachers per grade that were apparently listed, is there a link or something they can go to to see who those teachers were that were announced? Yeah, so uh, you can go uh, to our Facebook page uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Sarah uh, videotaped, it's a ra rather short video, uh, where he announced uh, our Crestwood Cyber Elementary teachers. We have not yet assigned grades. Uh, we certainly have um, uh, internally teachers in mind for specific grades, but again, we're still waiting on, um, uh, you know, on looking at numbers and how we believe, you know, we'll best meet uh, the students' needs and the pairing of the teachers. So if for right now, the names, uh, and I wouldn't even want to try them off the top of my head because I would probably, uh, I'd probably mess it up, but they are on Facebook, uh, I believe on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you could go there and, and Mr. Sarah's uh, short video message it is available and will continue to be available uh, for your uh, viewing abilities. Thank you, Mr. Mahalik. Um, next question is from Bill. Will you conduct a cyber demo with students introducing the teachers and schedule? I think we kind of answered that. Um, Laurieanne, my son has an IP with speech and OT, how will that work with the cyber learning? Will there be extra help available for both my sixth grader and second grader if needed on new material? I think Bethann, you touched on that. Um, next question is from Maggie. I've heard you say the teachers uh, will be required to provide at least three sessions of substantive live lessons per subject per week. How many students are being offered in sixth grade? For example, for the purpose of this requirement are ELA, math, science, social studies, considered a separate subject? Yes, each of those is a separate content area. So each of them will have a separate Zoom session, but it won't be everybody, um, it won't be every content area every single day. That's why it's only two to three times per week. 
So it's very possible your child's schedule could be a live session with their ELA teacher, a live session with their art teacher, and uh, office hours with their math teacher, and um, a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session with their science teacher. Thank you, honey. Uh, Bill's question, I believe, was also answered. Kevin Scott asks, can the kids take extra classes online through the Cyber Academy? Would they be able to keep taking the extra classes should they return to in-person learning at the school? That would be Mr. Gorham. Yeah, so I've had this question a couple times. Um, if, if the students are taking an elective within the Cyber Academy that doesn't align to the brick and mortar schedule um, that they would have and they choose to return to the brick and mortar setting or, you know, things improve drastically and we have a lot of people come back, they could still maintain that course in the Cyber Academy and finish out that course for the remainder of the year and trans transfer back to the brick and mortar setting. So, um, you know, the example that we use is if they were taking, you know, like a Chinese um, foreign language course, it would be something that we don't offer in the school. And then they transferred back to the brick and mortar and they went back into their math, English, history class, those things. They could still maintain that, that Chinese foreign language course on the cyber and finish that out. Thank you, Mr. Gorham. Uh, Lisa Ann asks, for in school, since no lockers, will kids need to carry all textbooks all day or will textbooks remain in classrooms? Yeah, the, the, I, this is a question that's come up a couple times as, as far as um, you know, some of our seventh and eighth grade students, um, they have, um, you know, they have a steady schedule of academic courses. They have books for each of them. Um, the students are uh, on the smaller side in, in those grade levels and they, they get quite heavy. So it is a discussion that we've been having to try to maybe allow them um, to, to leave a book here and there if they're a student that struggles with being able to carry them. So it is something that we're discussing and we're going to come up with some possibilities but we are aware that it can get quite heavy at times but they are going to be allowed to carry the the book bags throughout the day as well jocelyn asks i heard there was a request for busing that was emailed but i did not receive where can i get that so jocelyn uh if you can uh please send an email to megan nealon uh, M E G H A N dot or period Neelan N E A L O N and it's at uh, CSD Comets dot org. So Megan dot Neelan at CSD Comets dot org. Uh, some did not get uh, the, in fact, quite a few did not get the, the enrollment uh, form for transportation. Uh, many uh, said it went into their spam. However, she will send it to you. Uh, and again, we're doing that because there will be signed seatings uh, for all students on the bus. And, uh, and so we need to know exactly, and there will be no more than two students per seat. So we really need to know, um, you know, how many students this year will be taking uh, our transportation. Thank you. Ginny asks, uh, please explain how the kids will be social distance in the brick and mortar classroom in between periods changing classrooms. So I could talk to either Mr. Mahalik or I could take that question. Um, this, this is something that we're continually working on. Um, we have a, a health and safety plan that we need to complete that we're, um, you know, adding to and discussing and working with our pandemic team to come up with the best, the best case scenario as far as social distancing. Um, within the classrooms, we've had our teachers removing everything from their classrooms except for the desks. All, all their personal stuff has been removed to try to create as much social distancing as we can within the classroom setting. 
Um, we're trying to reduce the numbers in each classroom section um, to, to have the best social distancing we can. Um, we understand there's still going to be some classrooms that have numbers that are fairly high, but we're going to require the students to wear masks at all times within those settings. Um, as far as the hallways, um, this is a difficult question on a secondary campus. It's a difficult response. It's a thing that is challenging for all districts. Um, the ability to control human behavior is very, very difficult. Um, the students are, you know, free to change classes. They, they have to walk from one point to another. Um, we're going to be putting in um, social distancing signage throughout the building. We're going to be putting in directional signage throughout the building and, and trying to keep the students on one side of the hallway um, and you know do our best to to speak to the kids and tell them that they need to control their own their own behaviors and it, it attempt to keep the best social distancing they can. As far as the lunch setting, we're we're working on a on a process today to try to create some additional space within areas of the building so that when the masks are removed. That, that we maintain the six feet of social distancing during that time. And if I can add to that, so right now the Department of Education is allowing masks, shields, or face coverings to be worn. We are mandating as a district face masks only on transportation because we know that will be the closest our students will be. So there will be uh, face masks uh, for for transportation and right now with the Department of Education students can wear shields, face gaiters, things of that nature uh, because th they're aware and we're aware that um, that there will be some kids that just cannot wear a face mask all day long uh, or even you know for a portion of the day. Uh, with that let me say and and you know for those of you uh, who are watching your, your, your children there are few people that I see out. Now, of course, I'm only looking at, I live in the Hailston area. I uh, am in the mountaintop all day, every day. I travel into Wilkes-Barre for different meetings. I mean, there are kids on the parks, in the playgrounds, in the ice cream shops, you know, going about and, and few are wearing masks. So it's going to take, it's going to take our team, which is the administration, the faculty, the staff, and of course, the most important people is our parents to reinforce the importance of kids wearing face coverings. Uh, and they may not be used to doing it at home or, in their, or in the, uh, when they're out with their friends, but it, it, it's in school, it's gotta be that way. So we all have to work together and there can't be, well, it's, it's um, you know, it, it's voluntary or, no, it's not. You've got to be wearing it. And I know that's going to be a change for a lot of our students, or at least a lot of the kids that I have seen, um, you, you know, uh, by the, by the, you know, my, my going about. Uh, there was a question about how will we enforce masks on the district uh, or on the bus. So, you know, again, it, it's a family it's the teachers, it's everyone. We don't expect a driver to be looking back and saying, put your masks on. You know, th this has got to be a team effort. The same way, you know, we don't expect the driver to tell kids to keep their hands in the windows, uh, keep them, you know, remain in their seats, don't throw things. These are all bus rules. You've got to follow the bus rules. Transportation is something that, you know, unless there's an, a specific need and it's put into an IEP, it's not something that you uh, are given uh, freely without understanding there are expectations of your behavior. So if kids can't follow rules and they're injuring other students or other people, well, then, you know, that it's not going to be something that's afforded to them. Uh, that's, you know, not something we want to do, but it's something we have done. If, if there's unsafe behaviors on, on our transportation, then, you know, we, we have conversations and those, will be conversations we'll have with the family. But um, so it, it's going to take a team uh, to keep us all safe and to mitigate the risk. Uh, and, uh, and, and there is risk. And we know that going into this. Uh, in every walk of life right now, there is. So we need to mitigate it. But working together, then we're going to, uh, you know, 
it's our best chance at keeping everyone, you know, as uh, comfortable and safe as possible. Thank you. Uh, Sky asks, my daughter starts first grade this year. Is there a special enrollment we need to complete since she will be attending Cyber Academy and paperwork turned in, or will, will we find this out later? I think that's Mr. Gorham. Sorry, Damien, can you repeat that? Let me see. Uh, I think they're just asking about enrolling for Cyber Academy, which we have out. Um, do you want to provide like the link to that? Asking yeah. if there was special enrollment. I will put the link in the chat. Okay. Um, we, we will be disbanding, just for everybody's knowledge, we'll be disbanding the uh, interest form that is out there that will be going away today. Uh, because obviously at this point, um, if you're interested, you will have either met with us, spoke with us, attended you know, several of the town hall meetings that we've already had, or uh, attend some of the uh, town hall meetings coming up. So we will disband, uh, Mr. Blanchard will, the interest form, and there will only be left the, uh, the cyber enrollment form. Okay, thank you. Um, this came up a couple of times and maybe we should just clarify a little more. Um, Bill asked to please explain a typical cyber day. I know, Annie, you mentioned the time and hours. Do you want to delve into that just a little more? So basically, um, the kids will all sign on. We have um, Google Classroom as our home base. They can sign on there, find out what their uh, announcements are for the day and anything that might be happening throughout the day as well as the assignments that they'll need to complete. They'll maybe get on for about an hour and have their math lesson and the teacher will be on, have them do work, stay on. They can choose to go off then if they're good and come back if they need to. Then maybe they'd move into social studies We'll have designated lunch and, and exercise time, and they'll have time to do their specials. Their work will be completed during those school work hours. If they choose to do some of their work after, that's fine, but they're, if they want live access to a teacher, it's going to have to be done during school hours, as well as if they want to attend um, Comet Cafe for anything during the day. That's a, just another option for tutoring, and that has to be scheduled. So I would expect, like I said, multiple Zooms throughout the day, plus time built in for them to work on their own, doing their practice and their quizzes and their tests that they have to do just like they would in class, and um, as well as working on any extra projects that might be going on and completing their requirements for their special areas. Thank you, Annie. Uh, Lisa Ann asks, have you heard any recommendations from government health agencies if it's safe to send a child to school if a parent has a compromised immune system? Um, yeah, I mean, again, a, a very good question. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not that specific uh, because they don't want to give that type of, um, you, you know, that type of guidance, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, I will say that, you know, you've got to make that personal choice. Um, we do know that kids can spread to adults. Kids oftentimes don't show symptoms. Um, so it's, it's really, and it's why it was so important for us to have two options, right? Because, you know, there are people in those positions and they may be, you know, a personal position, mom or dad has a condition, might be a sibling, might be a parent that you are, you know, you know taking care of. So uh, we, we need it and, and want it to have another option. Um, and um, and I, I will say that that is, you know, why we're so proud to offer Cyber Academy. So your option is not disconnecting you from your district. It's not taking you away. Our kids and families have lost a lot through this. And, and we want to you know, we, we want to prevent any, you know, any more losses uh, possible as it relates to their school system. Um, I would strongly encourage you to talk to your doctor uh, if you do have a condition. And again, you know, it's going to be how comfortable you are. Um, and, you know, we couldn't give that guidance. I know that you won't see the Department of Health 
give that guidance, but your doctor probably can give you some sort of percentage of this kind of condition is reacting because there is that data now. So we're looking at how different conditions are, are reacting to this disease. Um, but speak to them and, uh, you know, good luck and, and best wishes with that. Okay, hold on a second. I lost my spot here. Okay, uh, Jocelyn asks, will the school be closed when a child or teacher tests positive or when they are believed to have COVID? So we we'll continue to get guidance. Right now, uh, if they're believed to have COVID, we would not be closing schools down because believed to have COVID and understand and everybody here realizes that the, you know, the symptoms of COVID-19 are similar to symptoms of your daily, you know, uh, you know, medical procedure in our nurse's office, runny noses, uh, you, you know, cough, uh, you, you know, maybe feeling a little fatigued. Uh, those are all part of what our nurses deal with every single day. So, uh, and I know Mr. Sarah has just joined us. Hello, Mr. Sarah. He's actually in training right now with our cyber teachers. Thank you for coming on. Uh, so we will not close when there is um, someone with symptoms because again th th that would be all day every day uh, a confirmed case that the health will contact uh, first the the parent um, or the employee then the district okay and then contact tracing will begin contact tracing will be will be done completely by the Department of Health you may have noticed they have uh, 1,000 openings in this region for people to contact trace. Legitimately 1,000 open positions. Um, so they will have tracers uh, that will start to immediately look at the guidance. So, so we're, how do I, what do I feel comfortable with? I'm comfortable with a positive case in a building closing for two days to five days, which will allow the contact tracing to take place will allow, even though we are gonna be deep cleaning daily, really go into that areas that we know are affected, bring in our, our steam uh, machines that, that we purchased uh, and, and really you know, ensure that those rooms are disinfected completely. Um, now there is guidance coming as recently as the meeting I was on before this saying, you, you don't need to close with a positive case. So we're gonna to continue to review that as a district uh, I still feel that, you know, at least two days in order for the contact tracing to take place, for everybody to feel comfortable, uh, but we're going to continue looking at and taking the guidance about when we close, if we close with a positive case. Thank you, Mr. Mahalik. Um, Eric Reinheimer, just confirming cyber kids will be eligible for honor roll and honor society? Correct. Uh, the next couple, I believe, were answered, so I'm going to shoot down here. Um, Jason Jennings, and I think you touched on this a little bit, Mr. Mahalik. How do you intend to ensure students wear masks on the bus? Doesn't seem reasonable to expect mass informants from the drivers while driving. It, it's not. It's it's got to again the same. It's not expected that a driver, you know, is going to tell kids to stay in their seats. That a driver is going to uh, not, you know, do something if a kid throws something out the window. And I know that, you know. This is another bus procedure, and it's going to be us and families, and sh you know, just can always educating our, our, our children and our students that you need to wear these masks. The bus, you know, even the longest bus ride is not that long, um, or at least it should be that you can get through that bus ride with your mask on. Uh, so it, it's going to be, and again, if it's really, really becomes a situation, then it's going to be administration, myself, meeting with the families, and, you know, obviously, uh, you, know, you know, dealing with the situation. Thank you, Mr. Malik. Um, the next couple, I believe, were answered. Their, uh, Nicole's question, I think, Mr. Gorman, you answered this. Does the content area for live classes include all courses or just core classes? My daughter's going to start French this year. Will this course being an elective have live classes during the week as well as core classes? Yes, all classes um, will have live lessons. Thank you. Um, let's see here. 
bear with me. I'm, I know some of these were answered. I'm trying to move through them. Thank you. So Laura asks, uh, just saying if in-person learning is delayed and starts after September 2nd, when would distant learning start? Uh, again, there, there, at this point now, there would not be a delay to the beginning of the school year unless there's something that we can't foresee right now. If the governor would delay us, uh, that, that, that delay would be for a, at least a 30-day um, shut down. Again, the, the governor's office has come out and said they will not make that decision. That decision to close will need to be made on a county or a specific district, um, you know, basis. So I don't see us being closed by the governor. Now, again, that could change, uh, but if it did, then we would revert to distance learning. Thank you. Um, Kevin asks if, uh, if we sign up for cyber, will someone contact us to schedule courses? Yes. And that process will be taking place, you know, again, I would say within the next week, um, or at least within the next uh, two weeks, that will be being taken place. A lot of your students in the secondary level have done their schedule. We've run those schedules. A lot of those schedules are going to convert over, but we will be looking at each and every single student personally. Um, so yeah, and, and that's the process we're in. You know, first we're looking to finish the scheduling on the secondary campus. Uh, and obviously that's been delayed a little bit with all the situations, but they're really, really, uh, Mr. Gorman and his team are, are really close to having that finalized. Uh, and then we will literally hand pick our cyber students and start looking at those schedules you know, period by period. Thank you, Mr. Malik. The next is regarding enrollment for, um, do we have a current count on seventh cyber and ninth cyber? It's actually a lot of questions there, Mr. Mahalik. I don't know if you wanna just kind of wait till we get closer to school because the numbers are constantly changing. Yeah, they, I mean, we, we average, uh, and, and, and Christy and myself are the ones that are really uh, the ticker counters. Uh, you know, we probably this morning are up to 10 new enrollments, averaging 20 some a day, expect that to go up. So, um, you know, every, everywhere, you know, we're, we're, the, the numbers are, uh, again, seventh grade, you know, maybe, uh, Chrissy, if you've got a general count right now, and again, they're, they're, they're changing. 20 kids in seventh grade uh, have enrolled, uh, probably 26 in eighth grade, 16 in ninth grade. Again, those numbers are changing by the minute. Yeah, that's accurate. Okay. Seniors is probably our, our, uh, our smallest enrollment right now, which you would expect that. Uh, a lot of our seniors are in uh, college programs, uh, you know, and a lot of our students on the singular campus go to the CTC. So there, there is less students just by, you know, virtue of the scheduling that we have but uh seniors is probably our our least out of students enrolled in cyber at this point thank you um kevin also asked if crestwood teachers are teaching cyber will they also teach brick and mortar or is it one or the other i think kevin sarah could probably answer that one best morning everybody it depends on the level uh, K to six, there these teachers are 100% Crestwood Cyber Academy teachers. At the secondary campus, there could be instances where a teacher is 100% teaching cyber, or there could be instances where they teach face to face in addition to cyber. And there's also instances where it could be an Edmentum teacher at the secondary campus. We're looking at seven through 12. A uh, teacher employed by Edmentum, they're obviously properly credentialed. Um, they're PA certified teachers. So it's a, I, I don't know who the Kevin is that's asking the questions. I apologize for my, my late arrival. If it's been clarified, Kevin's asking about secondary campus or elementary students. I don't think it was specific. Um, 
Yeah, I don't think it was specific. He was just asking. I had given the same answer. Okay. The next, I think, couple were answered. Um, a vet asked, confirming cyber kids are toggling between Admentum and Google Classroom. It's not solely based on Admentum question. It's a single sign on through Google Class. Nicole asks, how are parents kept in the loop of the student's progress? Is there a parent portal? Yes, there is. Now again, are those secondary campus questions or are those elementary? They're not specific. So there's numerous communication vehicles within the Crestwood Cyber Academy in terms of a Google Classroom itself has a lot of interaction between student and parent and teacher. They'll still have Skyward access uh, to utilize as well. And then within the different technologies, there are reports. Uh, but the Crestwood Cyber Academy Elementary will need to have all information come back in through Skyward because as a teacher, I can I have multiple resources at my disposal that can also do grading for me. So those assessments, that assessment information needs to be funneled back through Skyward in a one-stop shop format. Thank you, Mr. Sayer. Um, Katie asks with cyber, how does it work if a child is not able to participate for a day or so? Oh, um, <clears throat> very good question. I mean, you, you know, your, your child can still become sick and, you know, with a cold or whatever the case may be, you may have to travel. So there's obviously uh, the, the, there's going to be situations like that. Communicate with your teacher, communicate with your teacher. Um, that's going to be the most important thing for you to do. Thank you. Um, for a child that needs to quarantine due to exposure, is there a distant learning option during this period while the school is still open? If not, how quickly can the child move to the cyber school? John, I, that's, that's John's favorite question. How quickly can they move to the cyber school? I, I, didn't, I didn't see the question. I want to read it. It was if the student was uh, quarantined. Yeah, if the kids quarantine, are they then moving to cyber or are they just getting like makeup work from their brick and mortar teacher? So if, a, if an actual student is quarantined, would that student be receiving supplemental work through brick and mortar or would they be going to cyber? Right. Well, that's an interesting, that, that, that's a difficult question because if they if they become quarantined with symptoms, um, you know that's going to be from a medical standpoint. Are they going to return to Crestwood brick and mortar um, quickly, or are they going to be out for a lengthy period of time? I mean, every case is going to be handled individually. Um, we have the the ability. Um, to be creative at that point. Um, we have the cyber option that would be a really easy transition as well as we could have, you know, the teacher teach them virtually, but seeing that the entire school would be brick and mortar and the teachers wouldn't be teaching the, their, their kids virtually, the, the option to go to cyber would probably be the more favorable choice. So we if there's a positive case, if it's a positive case, it's now a 10 day quarantine for that person. In this case, the student. Um, so, you know, it could be 10 days off of school. We oftentimes have students conditions that has 10 days off and we would send homework, you know, and do as much as we can do. You wouldn't necessarily need to leave to go to cyber. Um, in fact, I wouldn't even suggest that if you are, wanting and, and planning on coming back. Uh, so right now with a positive case, it's 10 days. Uh, if it's symptoms, then, um, you, you know, really, you know, we're going to follow the protocols uh, of when you can return. Uh, I think you've got to be, and, and, and there are symptoms and we will release them and every parent will have them. Um, but I don't think you would need to immediately run 
to cyber if you're in our brick and mortar and either test positive or have symptoms. In fact, with symptoms, you would not want to do that because kids are going to get sick. Kids are going to get the flu and, and flu-like conditions. And I think Mr. Sarah is raising his hand. Can we open Kevin's? Uh, there you go. Thank you. And definitely in, in the K to six environment, I would recommend the student remain within the face-to-face -face instruction and not be shifted to the cyber academy. Through the resources that we proactively purchased as a district, we're able to mimic, not duplicate what's occurring within the classroom. So I certainly, if I'm a fifth grade student who's missing my reading assignment and the reading context or concepts are inference, I can push assignments through our resources that cover inference that can be worked on self-paced at home. I said yesterday in the call, one of the first things we're gonna do face-to-face -face is prepare to not be face-to-face. -face. So prep two preparations are gonna take place the second we come into school, September 2nd. Health and safety is foremost. We're gonna teach about using masks, teach about social distancing, review hygiene, review those concepts. And then secondly, we need to make sure that we're prepared to go out distance for a host of reasons. So it should be more seamless in this instance. So now your child's at home, 10 days, 14 days, and your, your teachers can prepare to offer you something meaningful while you get better and are able to return to the campuses. That would be, that would be my preference. Uh, but every, you know, the context of elementary and the context text of secondary are, are two different things. So I understand where Mr. Gorham was coming from. And Mrs. Lawball looks like she'd like to speak as well. Yeah, as far as on the secondary campus, the administration has enabled us with many resources that if they could stay in brick and mortar and through Google Classroom and Edmentum and other programs we have, um, still keep up on their classwork and know what's going on. So they shouldn't need to switch to a cyber type learning. The teachers will be able to support um, in other ways via class, Google Classroom. So it should be fine. Just as if a student were out sick in the past before there was COVID. We have a lot of resources to make sure the students don't fall out. Okay, thank you all. There's uh, just one last question I think we can tie up here. Um, Maggie asks, will ELA social studies, math, science constitute separate subjects, or could the teachers be combining ELA social, math, and science for a single lesson per week? If it's secondary, yes, they will constitute separate subjects. If it is elementary, the teacher will be combining those lessons um, into longer videos. Um, they won't be meeting the kids multiple times per week. The kids are going to get that instruction more closely related to what it will look like in elementary. So I know Mrs. Froelich, I believe, is asking that question on an elementary level, uh, even though I know she has students over both, uh, both age ranges. We are intending on um, breaking it down by content area. Uh, we, would, we would prefer to have uh, to mimic the Crestwood elementary report card so that there is a reading time, a language time, a social studies time, a science time, and a math time. And also we have planned to offer special, uh, specifically um, direct instruction in music and in art to the best of our ability. Uh, physical education will be done by a physical education exercise log and uh, to mimic our library education. We, we have some outcomes for that as well or some plans for that as well. But uh, I, w I was not in this meeting for the first hour because I was working with our Crestwood Cyber Academy staff who's doing a great job. Uh, they're really excited. And our next meeting is on Wednesday, uh, the 12th, which is one day after the soft deadline for um, cyber enrollment. And our reason is to we can't really formulate our plan of attack until we know, you know, the size of the army that we're up against. So we have to see the number of Crestwood Cyber Academy enrollments and then distribute our teachers accordingly. We have a, we have a general plan right now, uh, but we keep making adjustments. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions that are coming in, you can obviously watch this recording. I just posted the Facebook link and our new YouTube channel link. Um, I will be posting all the videos there. So if you don't have Facebook, you can find it on YouTube. And then you can obviously watch this after I post to answer any of the remaining questions. Mr. Mahalik. 
I just, you know, again, want to thank our, our families for the support that you provide us. Um, you know, I will tell you, we do appreciate the nice comments that you give us. And, and we'll take the other stuff. You know, I personally don't look at social media, uh, but I know, obviously, there's always going to be people that, that, you know, just things just aren't working to their, you know, to their benefit. But we appreciate so much your uh your support and and the and the, and the nice comments it, it does feel good in trying times um our, our team you know we're here for you we're here for your children uh again our, our goal is always a comment and, and and that's what we want for these students that they don't feel that they're no longer a part of crestwood and i know that that's there's obviously going to be a, a bit of detachment if they're online uh but we're going everything we can uh, to, to close that, close that gap of them feeling that way. Uh, we are here for you um, and, and with you. And together, I know that we're going to get through this and, and move forward and, and be better than ever. But I can't thank you enough. Uh, and, and to my team, what a phenomenal team, a phenomenal team. I said, we got to make ourselves available every single day to talk to our families. And not one person said no. I got so many things to do. They said, what a great idea. I wish I could take credit for the idea, but, uh, but it is a very, it's our way of saying, we want you to feel as comfortable as possible. Um, so good luck, uh, be well, stay safe. And again, if, if we're together, we're gonna get through this and Crestwood will be even more dynamic on the back nine. So thank you. Mr. Mahalik, real quick, before we leave, uh, Haiti White asked the question, I think it was kind of, I might have missed it, um, just about transportation from a kid coming from cyber to brick and mortar. There will be busing available for them. Yes, absolutely, Haiti. Uh, again, we would you know, take us a, a day or so to just make sure that we have a seat. We, we will have a seat, without question, uh, but it will be an assigned seat. Uh, and yes, they, they will absolutely have transportation if you leave cyber to come uh, back to brick and mortar. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone. Have a great Wednesday.